Most of the fish or shellfish that we eat, I catch or gather myself, either fishing from the shore or from out on the kayak and also doing a bit, bit of foraging. But there are occasions when I do buy some fish in. And what I like to do is, is buy fish that I can't catch myself. So for example, ling is one example which, which I, we enjoy, is a, is a good alternative to cod. But I, I can't catch ling because I can't get out on the kayak to, to the wrecks and the locations where I stand a good chance of catching them. So I sometimes buy ling. Another one is haddock for the same reason. They're usually out fairly deep and again on the kayak I can't get out to, to the areas where I stand a good, good chance of catching ling. So I, I buy haddock occasionally. Um, enjoy fresh haddock or particularly enjoy undyed smoke haddock to have as a breakfast. So about once a month, every six weeks, I contact a, a brilliant local fishmonger, mobile fishmonger called Mike. Phone him up and say, Mike, um, have you got any of this have you, and have you got any of that? And which is really handy, particularly if I times when I've not been able to get out and do some fishing and we're getting we're getting a bit low. So anyway, I saw Mike yesterday um, to pick up one or two things, like a ling, and I bought some haddock, some smoked haddock, etc. And he said, oh, he said, I've got, I've, got, I've got some of these. I said, what's that? He said, they're called a sand sole. Now, I've never heard of a sand sole before. Some of you may have done. I've certainly never caught one. He said, yeah, he said, it's, it's very, very similar, more or less the same as a Dover sole but much, much cheaper, and it tastes just as good. And I said, oh, let, let me have a look, and this is what they are. So virtually the same as the Dover sole, with, with some differences, which I'll talk about in a moment. So I said, they're, they are a really good price. They're, 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 they're quite cheap. So I brought, I've got two here, but I, I bought three, and I, I only paid about six pound for three. So I thought, yeah, great, brilliant. I'll take, that's all he had, three. I'll take, I'll take all three and really look forward to trying these as a, as, a, as a treat. So when I got back home, out of curiosity, I looked up this fish, the sand sole. And what I'm looking at here is the Cornwall Good Seafood Guide. And what it set, says in the description, a species of flatfish that is occasionally landed by Cornish trawlers and netters. It is very similar in appearance to a Dover sole, but the sand sole is often cheaper and tastes just as good. And then it goes on to say, this species is not well studied, but there is no information to suggest that stocks are being overexploited. The best option is to choose day boat, boat, day boat trawled or net caught sand sole. And then moving on under the sustainability, it comes uh, as recommended as three. One, two and three is recommended. And going on to the biology, it says a close relative of the Dover sole, the sand sole is paler in colour and doesn't grow as large, getting to a maximum of 40 centimetres in length. It, it can be told apart from a Dover sole by the fact that it is paler and lacks the Dover sole's distinctive tiny tentacles, fringing, in, fringing its head. If you look at the underside of the sand sole, it has a distinctive rosette-like nostril, nearly the size of its eye. This is an under, underutilized species that has not been well studied in terms of stocks in our area. There is no reason to think that this, that this species is being overexploited in, at this time. Well, as I was saying, this is one of these fish. There's, there's, no, there's no chance of me catching this type of fish. Now I know that souls are caught along the south coast of Cornwall on the beaches, but with, with the fishing that I do, um, I've got no chance. So really pleased to to, to have them and really looking forward to trying them. So what I thought, okay, I know this is not a catch and cook video. 
I've, I've purchased these, I know that. But I thought I'd do a video about it, interesting. And if any of you have, have eaten these or even caught them, modern lion, please put a comment in the, put a, put a comment on the video and it would be interesting to interesting to hear about it. But with the winds are terrible. We've, we've had uh, blowing a easterlies 30 to 40 miles an hour for a couple of days now. It's set to blow like that for the next three days until into next week where it settles down down again. So there's no, there's no chance you get, you get really strong easterlies. It, it, it puts the mockers on, on a lot of the fishing. So there's no chance of me doing any fishing anyway. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to cook these two, Linda and I, we're gonna have one each. Cook them fairly simply. I've got a recipe for other flatfish I might try. And as all of us, I might look, look something up on the internet, see what's about. And it's gonna be really interesting to, to see what they taste like. When you look up recipes for Dover sole, most say you should remove the skin or at least take the top skin off. But I'm not gonna do that on this occasion. I want to try these as they are basically untouched. Obviously they've been cleaned. Um, so I'm not gonna do anything with them on this occasion. If I, get, if I get another one, then I might try the same way as you cook Dover sole. So what I'm gonna do is use a recipe that I use for place, one of my favorite place recipes. Uh, it's not my recipe. I got it from River Cottage and it's very, very simple and I find it works brilliant, brilliantly with place. So I'm, I'm hoping that it would be fine for this. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is boil a baking dish with some olive oil. and then season the bottom of the baking dish salt and freshly ground black pepper and then lay the the fish in skin, uh, skin white side down like that and then just brush the top of the fish with a bit more oil. And again, season. Then I'm going to add some knobs of butter. Then some parsley or another herb that I, I I use is for this is thyme. Some bay leaf. And then finally, around the edges, gonna put some, these are some chopped cherry tomatoes. Now, I find that roast tomatoes go really well with fish, flat fish. They definitely go well with place anyway, so I'm hoping they'll go well with with these sand sole. And the, the idea of this is not, is basically just to, to have the tomatoes with the fish. So it basically kills two birds with one stone. You've got your one stone, you've got your roasted tomatoes um, to serve with the, with the fish. And as I say, the flavor and with all the butter, once the butter melts uh, down and the herbs, the parsley, it, it makes a really, really nice sauce. All right, so plenty of tomatoes. I'm 
all around. And what what we're going to do, we'll probably have the this served with also some maybe maybe some jacket potatoes and some green beans uh, and something like that. Okay, that's it. So get the oven heated up around about 200, 220, and that'll go in the oven for only about probably 15, 20, 20 minutes, and then it'd be ready to serve. And I'm really, really looking forward to trying these. I mean, we talk about Dover sole, as I say, I don't catch Dover sole, and it's too expensive to buy. So if these sand sole are good, like they say, they're just as good as Dover sole, well, that's fantastic, and uh, if they if they come available again, then I'll get them again. But we'll see, we'll see what they're like. Right, now to, now to taste this fish. And uh, it certainly looks really good. Got a be beautiful, beautiful white meat, but um, I'll taste the fish just on its own without any, any of the, the sauces and the tomato. It's absolutely delicious. I cannot believe the quality of this. It is, it is exactly like, like they say, that it's very similar to, to Dover sole. But what, about a fourth of the price? Absolutely, absolutely amazing. All right, now I'll try a bit with some of the tomato. Which has got all, those, all the juices in. That really, really does go well. Now it's quite interesting actually, and maybe some of you can, can tell me. When you, as I said earlier, when you look up recipes for Dover sole, they always take at least the top skin off. Why is this? Why is that? Any of you that are professional chefs out there, why is that? Is it just purely for presentation? I know they, with Dover sole, a lot of the recipes is that they have a sauce is skinned and they have a sauce uh, poured over the over the top but most times when i eat whole flat fish for example place uh, and other fish brill um, dabs or whole I always keep the skin on because i know maybe some people don't like like the skin because it once it's cooked it, it peels off easy enough but one more one more, one more taste Yeah, really, really recommend it. So if any of you are, that have never heard of these fish before, as I didn't, and you're passing a fishmonger and you see sand sole for sale at a good price, um, and you like eating fish, give them a go. Or even better, for those of you, particularly on the, along the south coast, um, where I've seen that people do catch sole, um, if you if you were ever caught them before, that would be really tr interesting. Caught them and then take taking them home to to own, home to eat, or maybe some of you have caught them but thought they were Dover sole rather than the sand sole. But interesting, interesting to interesting to see. Right. Well, we'll just see now how what Linda thinks of it. Honest, honest opinion, Linda. Okay. 
That is really tasty. It's good, isn't it? It's good. I mean, I can't believe, can't believe the price. No. I think, I've thought about it, I think it was £6.50 for three. And that would probably have cost us, for three of the a Dover sole, that would have probably cost, I bet it would have probably cost over £20. Mm -hmm. Maybe even more. Worth having, definitely. Yeah. Well, okay, that's it. We're going to carry on now and finish this off and enjoy this. And I hope those of you that have never heard of this fish before found that interesting. And many, many thanks for watching.